Okay, it looks like we're recording. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is Gordon Einstein, your favorite uh, Dubai crypto and blockchain attorney. Kim came out with my awesome hobby of having cool conversations with people that I admire, that I know, that are in this ecosystem, all the above. So Joshua Bulls, hopefully I'm saying this correctly. I've known you for a long time. Yeah, yeah. what's up, Gordon? Yeah, man. Okay, just, to, you know, I always like to make sure. Uh, you you are... Know. You're like a master of the universe. I, you know, it's like I think we're <laughs> moving up in the world here. Um, and you, right yeah. now you are in Abu Dhabi, I believe. So you're jetting around, mm -hmm. uh, working on some, to be honest, some public stuff and some stealth stuff, which is exciting. And we're, we're, mm -hmm. we're bookmarking mm -hmm. the stealth thing for later. We've already agreed to come back yep. on the show, and I'll hold you to it. So yep. once that once that yep. services that submarine, we're going to talk about that. But before yep. we get into your background. What, what are you working on now, or what what are we going to come back to after we cover your background? What, what's top of the, of the list for you? I think the thing the thing that's most interesting to me right now, looking at all the indicators from BlackRock doing their RWA on ETH on chain to everything else, is really RWAs. You know, at the end of the day, right? I mean, my background is asset management and dealing with assets at the end of the day, right? And, and wealth preservation, wealth generation. So. You've got to be able to combine the two worlds. And so that's the project and that's the the thesis that I'm most excited about right now is just being able to take our real world TradFi algorithmic liquid trading strategies in the foreign exchange FX currency world, uh, soon to be launching in the treasury world as well, and be able to offer that on chain because people want to live on chain and it's yes. the best way to live for sure, uh, 100%, right? But you still want to be able to access uh, something that makes sense where it's not some Terra Luna bullshit in the end of the day. And you're like, oh, yeah, how am I actually making the money? Like, you know, how are the how is the alpha actually being generated? At what risk calculus? So, you know, so those kind of things are important. And we want to be able to give those kind of financial products to our awesome, amazing community that's growing by the day. And, and so that's what I focus on. You know what? So my normal thing is to go deep into the guest background, but you caught something and I don't want to lose it. The, um, you're right. There is this thing for wanting to live on chain and people want to do it. I I feel that but when you said it, it resonated with me. I, I felt something, but I don't know if I can articulate it. So what, what, what do you right. mean when you say that? Well, I, living on chain, I mean, my, you know, I think a bit differently than everyone, uh, you know, and never been accused of anything different myself. Mm -hmm. So I look at the future as you should be able to sit there and have your money working for you in liquid format trading. And then I want to go pay for something. I can pull it out of trading in real time, put it into any of the card systems that work, right? Visa, MasterCard, whatever case may be. But then I can work from a non-custodial DeFi format. So I'm on chain. So I'm in total control. So I'm not calling my banker, asking my banker for capital to pay a bill because I had to put it in training or I wanted it in trading because I didn't want it just sitting there. Because I, uh, you know, when cash is sitting idle, it uh, doesn't do anything for you, right? You want your cash working for you. Um, and you want to you understand the risk in order to get the rewards that you're taking, right? And we're not... Like in the liquid algo stuff that we're doing, I mean, we're doing amazing returns. Don't get me wrong, but we're not going to make 5,000%, right? But we're also not going to lose 50%. I mean, you know, again, you know, the historical is never indicative of future, but uh, I'm very confident and very comfortable with the way that we have this thing dialed in. Um, <clears throat> so I, living on chain, would like to be able to have my tether or my USDC, or whichever stable point I choose, on whichever chain I choose, I would like to have that money at work and then be able to live on chain where I can pay for things, okay? And, and whether that's paying for things, you know, online or offline, right? And it doesn't matter. All right, so let, let me feed back what I think you mean. All right, you, you want to have complete control of, of your assets, the allocation of them, the distribution of them, the, the withdrawal of them. And we- Everything. We kind of had a world like that maybe a little bit before, but I, I'm going to read between the lines a little bit, I think, and say you, you don't want human bureaucracy and discretion and subjective changing rules to get in the middle of that. You want it to be a computational act that's at your fingertips. That's so, right. A, computa okay. a, computation, a computational act is governed by protocol. It's exactly right. Okay. Right. And, and that, that, because that's pure, that's pure. I can trust the protocol because I can trust the, 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 the calculus 
mathematics behind the protocol itself. Okay. Yes. I thought I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Right. I'm very comfortable with permissioning my money on chain and having that money work in what I believe to be the most intelligent way that I want to have my money working for me based on my risk parameters and profile. Right. And that, that those vectors of risk will determine reward and I get to choose that. Now that's a huge responsibility. And I think there's obviously a huge, massive opportunity for companies like Betterment and so on. Right to then jump on, and I have a buddy that's actually building something on chain right now. That's like better. He was an investor in Betterment or something, and so you know stuff like that. Where then we're going to have financial products that are democratized down, you know, at that source level. Um, but I want to stay on chain. Right, I don't want to ever have to like call you know my HSBC banker, or my FAB banker to get money or to move money or to or to permission my money in in their bank. Right, I want to permission my money on chain. I actually find, you know, in, in Australia now, I keep on seeing this meme on, on Instagram, that some guy goes to a bank and he's withdrawing his own money from his own account. And then the tellers are instructed by law to ask, what are you using the money for? Now, I don't know if this is a meme right. or, you know, maybe it's an exaggeration because social media is not totally reliable. When people people want to exaggerate certain things. But I, I feel like it could be true. I mean, it's, it's true enough. It's, it's truthy. And I, I, I find it a bit insulting that... The, sure. the, you know that I mean. You know, it's my money. What, what do you mean? What am I going to use it for? It's like yeah. Is, is the Bitcoin has the Bitcoin net network ever asked you in in a signature and a transaction to disclose what the hell you're paying? You know what you're sending Bitcoin for, or what you're sending te you know Tether on OmniLayer or something for, or whatever the case. I mean, come on. You know, like well, you know, the, the, the and, and, Bitcoin and, from Nigeria once sent me an email telling me that I should explain myself and send my Bitcoin to him, but I don't think it was real. You. you you could, you should have. You might have been a very rich man, right? Oh. But I think, Jordan, this really hits the nail on the head, and this is one of the major pieces of the, you know, more uh, confidential stuff that we're doing here in Abu Dhabi that we'll talk about in the near future, which is sovereignty. Okay? Yeah. Right? At the end of the day, sovereignty is key and critical to the future of humanity. Right? Sovereignty is love, and that is the ultimate protocol. And so, they come when it comes to per you being permissioned or you permissioning, right? Do I own me? Am I am me? Am I me? Right. And God told me I am me. Right. Yahweh told me I am me. Allah right, told me I am me. OK. Uh, you know, th this is this is the God protocol. So sovereignty has to derive uh, this new system and so sovereignty has to be the master protocol. At the end of the court. That's the only way this works. Interesting. And, and just circling back, I, we, we will get it back on program, but you know, I, I'm, I'm going with it. Um, you know, you mentioned betterment. I don't have a, a problem with protocol based a a protocol a protocol based mode of delegation. Maybe that's the way to say it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I like that. You know, it's because if you're you're so long as you're granting the delegation via the protocol, and the protocol has a computational way to rever to reverse it, or you're committing, but you know what you're committing to, that that's okay. Yep. I mean, if we're gonna bring grandma that's on okay. the blockchain. She, she needs to be able yep. to, but it, it can't be this sort of arbitrary system that's always changing that we don't understand, that we don't have the power. Correct. Yeah, totally great. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Power. Yeah, that's it. It's all about the power of the people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, this is, I mean, look, we're, at the end of the day, you and I are Americans, right? America is an idea, right? America is much bigger than a country. America is an idea. And it comes down to the power, man. It comes down to freedom, and freedom is sovereignty. You know what? I, right. and I, I'm that an that Americanist, that's, that's even the, if that's America. The trust factor. Say again, one more time. Yeah, yeah, right. No, no, no. I was just saying that's where the trust factor comes in, right? And that, that to your point, I, I think that's that, you know, what the hell am I investing in? How does it work? What are my risks? You know, like no, no hidden bullshit, right? No, 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 no unseen long tail kurtosis, you know, scenario where I'm going to get black swan because, you know, some asshole didn't calculate something. I mean, we, we run it all the time at the entrepreneur's investment office and Demeter Investment Holdings, uh, our, our regulated shops and issuers and our group of companies. We, we run it all the time. People send us models and they're like, oh yeah, no, we ran it. It didn't fail. So on, we ran it. We're like, yeah, it failed 97% of the time, you know, like, I don't, I don't know what kind of, I don't know what kind of Monte Carlo, whatever you're running. Um, all right. And so I just, I think it's really important that people have access to products that are put together by people and everyone benefits in the alpha generation of those products. And that's what everybody wants. And, and I really, truly want to see this shit dice down to where if a guy gets paid directly to the Kareem or Uber app, 
I say cream because we're sitting in the GCC. <clears throat> Don't worry, we're first uh, unicorn out of the GC. And mm-hmm. they get paid by a dollar and they want to immediately take that dollar and set their preferences to go and put it into a, you know, certain allocation, whether it's directly into like our FX algo because they want the high yields or a blend or some particular type of indexation product, so to speak, or whatever. It's commercialized in a, in a structured product format. That's what I want in the future, you know. So then money can literally, and that's the that's the flu, that's the flow of uh, of money, right? That's in in the fluidity of of money, the fluidity of value um, is so cri- is so critical. And I feel like we've been choked uh, right now, um, and we've seen that with the the decrease in M two money supply, right? For example, and and these things you know, these things are really critical to the to the to the old system. The old system is crumbling as we see it. And the new system, you know, needs to come online and needs to be built and, and it has to be governed and powered by sovereignty. And I just I think that is absolutely critical. At the end of the day, we cannot have a government and we cannot have some overlord telling us that we are me. That doesn't make sense. No, I tell them I am me. You're that you're getting really ontological here. You're you're saying that identity is not derived from the external sovereign. The Leviathan. Correct. Right. No, 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 exactly right. No, identity is derived from ourselves, right? This is Yahweh's protocol. This is God's protocol. Okay. I, 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 you know what? Let me go take some ayahuasca. I'll come right back to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. The, you know, sorry. For the, for the Don't censors, next down, that, next that download. Just, you got it. Next download. Okay. <laughs> good, it's good. A family show. <laughs> okay. Josh, I always like to do this. Where were you born? Where are you from? Born in Arlington, Virginia, raised outside of Washington, D.C., Great Falls, McLean uh, area, Langley, um, not too far from where you were in Falls Church, actually, Gordon. Yep. So, you know, the home, the hometown Nova, Nova love. Um, spent most of my life there. Been in New York on and off for six, seven years. Uh, West Palm Beach, Miami, and then came over to Abu Dhabi about six years ago and really just fell in love with this part of the world and the vibes and you know, just the forward thinking and the way that you can get things coming from D.C., growing up around regulators, a lot of my friends that run the government sure. and seeing all of the government and, you know, and it's and it's in all of its capacities, honestly. And then coming over here and seeing the way that Abu Dhabi can move if you have something that's special, something that's interesting um, and it fits within their values and their ethics and their integrity. Oof, amazing. And so that's why I've uh, called you know, here, between here and Switzerland home, uh, the past, uh, six years, more or less. You, you are, wow. There's a lot to unpack there. The, it's funny. I, 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 I don't know if we ever talked about this, but I'm, I'm building a triangle in my life between Dubai, Switzerland, and when things come down to Ukraine and here you are doing the Dubai, Switzerland, I mean, not the Dubai, the UAE, Switzerland transit. So mm-hmm. yep. good, good job. It's an easy transit. It's, it's very, it's very nice. I mean, look, the, the one thing that I've noticed about both countries or both countries are very sovereign. You're you're left alone, you know, to your own devices. Just don't hurt other people. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't steal. All right. These are all the things that we should all operate by, honestly, anyways. And you just see it. There's there's no crime. There's no there's no threat in the UAE. Very little in Switzerland. Uh, you can kind of do what you want with your chalet or your villa or whatever, and you're all good. And, you know, just enjoy your life, right? And, and um, you know, and do something special with it. Uh, I'll see your comment and I'll raise it, which is when you pull back the curtains, they're both, whether they have it in the title or not, they're both confederations. Okay, the, the Switzerland's correct. a formal yep. confederation, and the cantons are extremely yeah, there's four, You have this locality. That's right. There's, four, there's, there's 40, 48 cantons in Switzerland, and there's seven emirates in the UAE, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, 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 actually, it's actually like cantons. Yeah. Very and very sovereign, exactly, right? You know, and that's and that's why it works because you can you can have your own identity, you can be your own person, you can say I am me, no problem, and no one's sitting there knocking on your door trying to tell you that you know you're LGBTQ or whatever the you know whatever is going on. I mean, you know. Yeah, but, but by the way, I, I identify as someone who doesn't identify as anything anyone else tells me. Um, so <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm still figuring that one out. Yeah. No, just kidding. Right? Okay, so let's keep on the history a little bit. Did, did you study somewhere? Did you go to school? Are you self taught? Yeah, I went to American. I went to I went to American Military University. Okay. Uh, so I special I, I specialized uh, in um, more on re- religion and history. 
uh, studies. So it was actually very good. A lot of philosophy as well. Uh, so it was really good, you know, uh, very eye-opening. Um, and then I've been exposed to finance my whole life. So really kind of self-taught, had a lot of mentors most of my life uh, that taught me finance, uh, the legal side, you know, kind of guys like you from a legal background, you know, working with like groups like Dentons, you know, and KL Gates and, and DLA Piper and so on, you know, got exposure to that very early. Um, big four, big accounting, big, big action was big eight. You, I you started... as a client, as mentors, or you, or you work there? Me, mo, mo, mostly, no, mostly mentors. Uh, and then I would work with them on deals, or I would work with them as I'm working from a family office standpoint. Uh, so I would then engage with the law firms, and I would get to learn as I'm putting deal structures together with the families. Uh, so that that's that's kind of, you know, my learning path and journey. And then I've never been uh, afraid to say no. You know, someone says, hey, you know, you you call me and you're like, Josh, you know, come uh, come meet me here. You know, I think I, you know, you really need you really should, you know, you really should come meet me here. I'm like, OK, cool. I mean, I'm, I'm really going to ask. We'll get on plane. Let's go. Interesting. Uh, I like it. Adventure capitalist. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's it's a beautiful way to be. So between the military military academy and all this how did you end up in the family office world what was that transition how did you work it uh i put together a number of bond deals between 2012 and 2016 that i was advising on so i got ex and i've been exposed to family offices uh, my throughout my life i didn't but i didn't really understand what they were mm -hmm. actually one of the big eight accounting firms uh, arthur anderson <clears throat> one of the former partners there I used to, he called me one day and said, Josh, I want you to come run my family office. And that's when I went down to Wellington, Florida. That got me in the family office world. And then I started to understand, you know, that level of sovereignty, so to speak, over your own capital and running your own house. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he wanted me to be in New York more to then get to partners in New York lined up. So that took me to New York more. And then I started to meet more families uh, and understand that there were circuits for families to meet, you know, whether it's family office association, family office network, family office insight, uh, you know, 1640, um, milk and, you know, then I got engaged in the world economic forum, <clears throat> like all those di different kind of things, salt, or Scaramucci, all this stuff. I, I got, I got exposed to all that kind of stuff. And, you know, then that led me into one thing and another, uh, and I found that I enjoy much more enjoy working with family offices than I do working with a bureaucracy or, or an organization at the end of the day. So I decided to go all in on that really what based more on what I'll be. What does it mean to work for a family office? What, what's your, what's your day or what, what's your, what's your mandate? Uh, it depends on the day, depends on the family, depends on the engagement, my previous life. So, you know, it could be, you know, anything from dealing with really, truly like personal family issues. And having to to deal with some of that stuff and help the family to deals, to banking, uh, to going and looking at, you know, crazy new penthouses that are being built that, you know, the patriarch wants to potentially put the portfolio mm -hmm. at a pre-construction valuation, um, you know, and evaluating that. So all, all, that, all that kind of stuff, you know, uh, driving fun cars. I mean, you know, these, these guys live an amazing life, uh, you know, and they, they do it up. Um, some of them, you know, you would, uh, think are homeless when you meet them because they just don't give a shit <laughs> what they wear, but they just stepped off of a Boeing business jet with their entire family and staff. And they're, you know, took a whole family at the man, man Oriental <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, so it just depends on kind of which, you know, which vibe, uh, you know, where they're from, their culture, their background. Uh, but the, the, the day, and especially for the middle of the deal, when we're in the middle of a deal. That's where things can get, you know, very intense. And I, I sometimes just can't, I'm camped out at a hotel for like two weeks, you know, on calls every day, just getting the thing done. Interesting. Now let, let me run something by you. I believe, how do I frame this? In the Middle East and maybe in Asia, I'd argue that family connections are very strong and there's, there's, you know, there's a strong tribal vibe and there's a strong family vibe. So, you know, you're, your, your second, you know, your, your your second cousin is closer to you than you know. If you're an American, than your wife is. Just to use a random example. Mm -hmm. So I I, yep. I think that you know, as you were talking, I'm thinking about maybe family offices are a way to reestablish in Western culture what we kind of lost by losing the informal non-government or non-legal kind of family structures. Do you know what I'm saying? In interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Cool. I see where you're going with that. I've never. Never thought of, I've never thought on that frequency before. That's fantastic, Gordon. Yeah, I love that. Well, it, it, you, you're discussing it and I'm, I'm like, what, what? it's not just a investment vehicle. 
and it's not just a property holding vehicle. It's it seems like a way to synthetically do. You, you don't you don't need a family office if your family's already acting together as a unit. You're extended big family, or maybe you don't need it as mm -hmm. much. I, I think maybe this is a way to patch for the breakdown of extended family relations in the West. You know what well, I mean? Well, no, totally. To, well, totally. I'm <laughs> totally. I'm just thinking back to experiences. Uh, many of them amazing amazing and good and many of them uh, ultimately traumatic with some of these families yeah. to your point where you've got you know the professional arm of the family because they have a they hold wealth right they store yeah. that wealth they build that wealth but then you've also got the family side which is personal and you can see some really crazy shit go down it doesn't matter how much money you have you know at the end of the day you still got to deal with the marriage you still got to deal with kids you still got to deal with addiction, abuse, you know, wh whatever, right? Psychological issues, mental health issues. You got to still deal with all that, man. Um, and and I've seen, and then I've seen families, you know, in my time now, I've even seen families go down because they lost their values. They lost their faculties. You know, they lost their ethics. Uh, they lost what was driving them. And, and that, you know, and that's really, really critical at the end of the day. And that's why, you know, second generation, 20% of the families lose their wealth third generation 90 percent of the families lose their wealth why because they they lose their heads you know why why did the first guy make the wealth and how does the third guy always you know freaking lose the wealth well it's because they lose their heads uh and they don't bring and, I, and i've seen the way and i'm telling you, this is so critical and this goes to the that this part of the family side side of things mm -hmm. almost all of these kids go to they go to boarding school mm -hmm. and so because they go to boarding school they're in this little clique and they grow up a certain way and so they have a different relationship overall with their parents. And so it's either going to go one way or the other where they go off to boarding school and they just become a complete degenerate and they're never like, they're never going to recover and they have no idea how anything works. Right. And their trust fund has never been cut off to those that actually do real shit, which is a small number of them. Mm -hmm. So I've gone and said, okay, let me look at the ones that, you know, are on this path, the ones that have good hearts and are pure. And let me go work with them and pull them in with their families, which are huge families. And mm -hmm. let's go do cool stuff and crazy shit with them, which is what we're doing on the secret project stuff here in Abu Dhabi that we'll talk about very soon. And these are very substantial mega families. And, you know, look, the, the parents are sitting there grinding away. I don't blame them. Uh, you know, but the kids are now in their thirties and it's like, yo, like, you know, you got to do something like, what do you want to do? And they're like, I don't really know. I'm not, not really sure how to do much, you know, at this point, like, you know, went to boarding school and was super well educated, but I haven't really like done much in the real world. I've gone to like, you know, a few meetings with you, dad, you know, here and there. Right. You know, met, met, met our, met our lawyers a few times, met our trustees a few times kind of thing, but don't really understand it um, because it's very specialized uh, in particular. Um, and then when it comes down to that, you know, it's a, it's a lot of um, uh, responsibility that you bear you know, when you're taking over the mantle and I have a, one of the families right now that I work with, this one of my investors, uh, the father is going through something and the son is taking over and the son's ready to take over because the dad ready. kicked him to wall street. Yeah. Ready. Because the dad kicked him to wall street and he was like, get out of here. You little whippersnapper, right? American based family. And now living here, his son is living in Dubai mm -hmm. and he's like, get the hell out of here. Go learn, you know, uh, go grind out. You know, and you're only, and you're not going to go live large in, in New York. And he didn't, and he had to, you know, work his way and he did. Uh, and the kid's ready, you know, and then we're going to do amazing stuff together with this guy and this family. And they're a very him. substantial yeah, good, family. Good for the dad. Good for the father because, you know, now he's second generation, the son taking over. The father created the wealth and he's created a substantial amount of wealth. I mean, this is, you know, this is no joke. This is very substantial. Um, but that's a rare case because most of the other times I then gets turned over to the trustees and so on. And it turns into this whole nightmare and battle. And you know, more, you know, you know more yeah, about that know, than it anybody is, being the, the lawyer that you are. I'm thinking, you know, I used to do estate planning back in Los Angeles before I stopped practicing law. And this is before I restarted with crypto and, you know, these, these families are all messed up. And, and I, I think the kids, or grandkids don't talk to the parents. They're into drugs. They they, yep. you know, they decide yep. to do porn films, and or, or they become yep. socialists as, as some kind of way of establishing their independence. Yep. Exactly, you know, like, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck the system. Exactly. You know, you know, which is a way to value. You know, they can't achieve what grandpa achieved, so they devalue what he achieved. Uh, you know, and they start, right. you know they get a little bit of a validation in doing it. But you know, but but yep. 
but I, I see that you know maybe I see that less in the Gulf. I, th I think between Islam and the strong family connections and the need, the fact that your community is watching you, you know, we're not just you know they're, they're less atomic here. I, th I think there's more pressure on the generations to at least maintain appearances, and often, hundred. I mean, I've been pleasantly surprised at how sharp and aggressive they are. I'm like, you you have oil money and, and oh, you're yeah. working this hard. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, dude, yeah, dude. A lot of the, a, a lot of the homies in the GCC are American or UK educated. No joke. Uh, the third generation is now generally taking over a lot. Some of it's second. Over a trillion dollars is now being passed down. All right. And the majority of GCC businesses are family owned, family run businesses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, look, the next generation coming up, these guys are sharp, man. All right. And it's like, uh, like, you know, we like to call Saudi Arabia the, the Texas of the GCC. I mean, go to Saudi, man. They're as Texas Habibi as you get. Right. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and every country, every country's got its own vibe. It's super cool. But, uh, you know, super smart people and, uh, you know, very motivated. Um, I just had a, I just had a call earlier today with one of my partners here in Abu Dhabi and they're regulated and we're going to be taking our security tokens uh, so we can offer that on chain access to the liquid TradFi off chain returns. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be doing that fiat to crypto component with them amongst other elements. And, you know, just talking with them and I was like, you know, guys, we need to do this so that this is an Abu Dhabi solution. Because this is an Abu Dhabi play, because mm -hmm. we are an Abu Dhabi group. And they were like, yeah, absolutely, let's do it. And they just messaged me, well, actually, we've been on the call. And they were like, yo, we're going to come see you this weekend. And, you know, they're backed by the Sovereign Wealth Funds here, you know, big, 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 solid group. So I'm super excited to see that everyone's now saying, okay, and now what we're going to do is through uh, my liquid investment advisor, uh, the Entrepreneur's Investment Office, uh, and our group holding companies to meet and so on. We have a relationship with all the banks. So we're going to bring the banks in because we already work with them as liquidity providers for the FX world. And we're going to bring the banks in, right? So the banks can give them a seat at the table and teach them this game. And we're going to build this new financial system with real world assets, yes. both liquid and illiquid, but starting out with liquid. And the reason we're starting out with liquid, Gordon, is because everybody understands liquid, right? So if I put a million bucks in and last month I would have paid, you know, over 90K, on a million bucks return using our FX strategy in Algo, in Felix, it's just, not, you know, it's amazing. I mean, it's just super cool. And we haven't even put our AI engine on this that you're aware of, right? New native. Um, so, you know, the liquid I mean, side is great. New because anyone... And Pavel check and the rest of them. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, Paul. Pa pa yeah, yeah. I'll see. Yeah, yeah. Paul just got, he just got here to see me in Abu Dhabi as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whole different, uh, yeah, it's a whole different vibe, right? That's all goes into the secret project here in Abu Dhabi. Um, but you know the the liquid the liquid piece is super interesting and super cool because you know people just love seeing money on their money, and it's yeah. like you know oh this this works right this is awesome and and this is all run by my partners who are all former HSBC Cantor Fitzgerald you know pedigrees up the wazoo we're triple you know double regulated soon about to be triple regulated FCA the FSA soon about to be SEC I'm already a Finra Reg D 506C approved right yeah, all that we're that. already all I that got, I just gotta ask. Because you said a name that echoes with my past. Cantor Fitzgerald, do, do you have anyone from Hollywood Stock Exchange? You know what I'm talking about? Mm, no, no. Oh, okay, it, it, was a, it, was a, it was a dot com that got spun off from Cantor. And obviously Cantor was, was caught in 9-11. But, um, but they, they, they were actually, they, they were doing a synthetic stock market or, op or betting market on oh Hollywood. i saw this yes i saw someone brought me this years ago yeah oh my gosh oh i remember this now yeah and they were they were related to cantor yeah oh they, i remember they, that they, now they, 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 they may remember me actually that's that's funny because i was doing okay just yeah so, so, we're, so we're working with all those kind of groups already i apologize my alarm is going off telling you that it's Time to remember. Um, so we're working with those kind of groups already, and we're already bringing them in on the FX side. So if I'm able to come and say, here, let's start out with liquid products. We already have our security token holders that are already KYC'd, AML5, blah, blah, all of that across the board. And then we want to then create more liquidity so that this product can trade on various convexity levels mm. as a product that's giving a yield, right? So that future value will then be 
calculated into the net present value, right, of, of that financial product itself. And then we're not having any slippage issues because there's liquidity being provided and there's enough for all the players to benefit within that liquid ecosystem. That's what we're building on the liquid side. And then we're putting the illiquid side as well, right? And we're doing that with a group called Republic that you're aware of, which is a very substantial group. Um, and maybe, they've maybe also got the, the audience. What, what service does Republic provide? Republic, uh, uh, they provide all kinds. So they've got a full multi-sig wallet that goes multi-chain, mm -hmm. which is very important. Uh, securities on chain in a tokenized format. <clears throat> uh they have a crowdfunding and a cap raising in general as well as a broker dealer in the us they're global uh and so they're able to take all of our stuff and then they also have now acquiring or acquiring i should say the rest of inx which is the only alternative trading system a ats in the us that allows for 24 7 trading of digital securities the only one in the us they're acquiring yeah, that as well that's interesting. yep Yep. So they're acquiring that as well. And that's another major piece of the puzzle. So then you're able to go and say, oh, I've now gone through the steps to securitize my real estate. I can get liquidity through this market rather than going to the bank. I can get better terms. I can get you know much more favorable and it's actually better locked in. Everyone's a whole lot more secure. Right. That's that's what we're building here in terms of the platform to create liquidity at the platform level and then have the protocols in place to securitize those real world assets and then have those blended returns between the liquid and illiquid pieces. And then topping that all off with the AI and the sovereignty levels. Right. Which is the project here. And I'll be able to talk about. Eventually. <laughs> OK, let, let, let me go yeah. back. How did you get into crypto? I got into crypto because I got a phone call from somebody, an old partner, who said, uh, you should get on a plane and go meet the chairman of the Bitcoin Foundation and the co-founders of Tether tomorrow in Puerto Rico, because I used to advise the mayors down there. And I went down to Puerto Rico, I was running a traditional family office for the previous uh, Arthur Anderson CPA partner. And I met the boys and they blew my mind. And I have a background in technology and computer science and cryptography. So when Brock and Craig uh, and Reeve and, and everyone else uh, told me about how SHA-256 works every 10 minutes, roughly, space-based, not time-based, uh, the Bitcoin network is secured uh, using the exahashes on, around the network. Um, you know, and, and this kind of the beauty of, of Satoshi Nakamoto's October 31st, 2001, uh, or sorry, 2008, uh, Gift to the World, uh, right? 2008, Gift to the World, uh, with the first block mine in, in January 3rd of 2009. And just kind of seeing what, what's, you know, what's happened and the game theory around that. And I read the white paper and I, I mean, I'll be honest, dude, I, I still read the white paper all the time. I mean, you know, like I don't claim to understand any of it, uh, but I read enough of it where it kicked and I was like, okay. Let me ask you, it, it is one of those things that use like the sum of sign. And Sigma and everything else. Do you understand that stuff? Yeah, I understand that stuff. Yeah, I have enough of a math background to understand those elements and understand the kind of the, the continuity and the homeostasis and the beauty of the math. You know, and then and and I've never been driven by money. You know, you and I have previously talked about this. It's never I've never been driven by money at all. But I'm I'm just always driven by like the cool stuff, right? And I just always want to be doing cool stuff. So when I saw this is like really cool stuff, I was like, okay, this is amazing. And then, uh, but I did see the financial uh, let me, piece. Let me get this straight, because this is, this is a great story. Was this, I mean, you're a smart guy in your finance. You obviously heard of Bitcoin before you got that phone call. What was your... Yeah, I had heard, I had heard of Bitcoin. So I had heard of Bitcoin. My buddy, Michael Taggart, uh, was an investor in something called BitShares, which became yeah, Steemit. Sure. Yep. And so I, and I, and I got, he exposed me to Steemit in 2016. I didn't quite understand what the hell a blockchain was, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And so I saw this, you know, Craig Sellers, who's the inventor of Tether, technically is the one who technically taught me how blockchain crypto works in the first ICO called Masterpoint, you know, he's an ICO investor in Ethereum. And then once I saw him, you know, and everybody else and Brandon Bloomer and the boys at Block One issue their, you know, EOS white paper and raise $4.3 billion in Ethereum, and I was sitting there with them, chasing them around, you know, on jets around the world. I never lived like this. I didn't even know anyone did. I was like, what the hell's going on? And I'm doing this, and I'm like, and I see it, and I was like, okay, you know, this is going to change everything. We're not there yet. It's going to take all, it's going to be a lot of fighting and everything. 
Uh, and then actually that's part of how, uh, because of my background in DC, I got a call for some people down in Puerto Rico and it actually went to the Sochi round table with Bruce in 2018. And I met wow. Caitlin. Okay. I, uh, I'm going to take a picture of this and I'm going to send it to Bruce. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bruce is an amazing guy. Wow. Yeah. That, and that, that, Wait, did, did, by the way, everyone watching this, this is actually happening. Hey, Bruce, uh, I'm Love recording it. a video right now that we're probably going to go publish. What's up, Bruce? Month, but do you remember Joshua Bowles? Here he is, and we're talking about it to you. So I'm going to send you What's this up, video. Bruce? What's up, Bruce, right? What's up, man? What's up, Bruce? How are you, brother? Yeah, man. Yeah, rock and roll, dude. <laughs> yeah so, awesome. dude okay, so, so that, that and and then and then i met caitlin, caitlin long and we co-founded something called digital asset trade association and we had Brittany kaiser caitlin and a whole bunch of people on the ground in wyoming in 2018 and we immediately changed the first five laws which has now gone into like 20 30 something laws i don't even know where we're at so that whole sparked and i saw okay we can do this because i grew up and i saw what google and microsoft and the other companies had done AOL and everyone else in Washington, D.C. And I saw they just come and poured money in. And I'm like, you know what? We can do this with even less money and we can do this at the state level, which is the whole idea of the Bill of Rights and the 19th and 10th Amendment is the states have rights and the states are the game theory elements of the U.S. Mm -hmm. Right. So like, OK, so we started out in Wyoming. We went to a number of other states, played around, did some things, went over to Korea, right, Japan. And then I came here to UAE. And that's when, you know, I started working here. Uh, with different people in the UAE as well to take some of that experience and to bring it here, which we now see what that's done. We have VARA, we've got rules and regs in DFSA under DIFC, we've got rules and regs in our FSRA and uh, ADGM, we've got Hub 71 and a whole bunch of other pieces that weren't here when I came to the country six years ago. So I see the way they're moving uh, here and I'm saying, like... What, what was your initial reason for coming here? My initial, I was working with a family office that co-invested with Mubadala, the sovereign wealth fund in Abu Dhabi. Okay. And they did a co-investment with Yasset, which is a satellite company. And that's a re that's the original reason why that family brought me here. And then I got to meet some of the, you know, the people here in Abu Dhabi. And then they asked me to come here and work with them. Oh, that, that, that's awesome. So you, you were, you came on behalf, on behalf of someone representing someone. They met you, other people met you here and they said, basically, stay. We need you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was great. Yeah, it was amazing. It was super warm, super, super amazing. You know, it's a, and it's been it's been like that ever since. It's the most incredible, beautiful place. The, you know, Emiratis are incredible people, especially Abu Dhabi. I love all the Emirates, but Abu Dhabi is my favorite by far. I'm an Abu Dhabi guy. Let's tease that out a little bit. You know, I I have minimal exposure to Abu Dhabi so far, so I I can't compare. What, what's most people do, man? Yeah, yeah. Abu Dhabi. Look, Abu Dhabi is much more serious. It's much more chill. Uh, it's not a party city. Uh, people do people do have their fun. Don't get me wrong. It's not as boring as everyone thinks, but it's just a very serious place. Uh, you don't see the kind of Dubai scamming that goes on. Uh, you don't see that here in Abu Dhabi. Uh, it won't last. You won't last more than a few days. Everybody knows who everyone is. Uh, one of the things that I was told by someone very interesting and very special here in the country was it's not about who who you know it's about who knows you and i find that to be an incredibly true and accurate statement in the world in general but especially here in abu dhabi and the gcc mm -hmm. and meeting who knows you and your reputation who knows you your reputation and your heart you know at the end of the day right because there's this is I, I i the reason that i love living here gordon is that it's it's real true love you know, if I really have a problem, I know there are a number of people that I can call here that are Emirati or that live here that are, you know, either GCC or from anywhere around the world, honestly. But there's a level of love here. Right. And I, I never feel alone. I never feel doubt. That's, that's great. And when, when you first came, did you have a network in place or people who had already come here sort of before you or did you build it quickly or what happened? I had a bit of a network in place, uh, but I, that's my superpower is, is building networks and, and kind of, you know, getting to bonding with people and getting to know people. Mm -hmm. I just love people at the end of the day. So I, I very quickly hit the ground running. Um, but I was very fortunate that I did happen to know the embassy uh, prior to coming here in the U.S. in Washington, D.C., where I'm from. Mm -hmm. and so I did happen to know the embassy there um, and, and a few very interesting people that plugged me in. Uh, and then I just did a lot of meetings, you know, and a lot of people that I met, I will never meet with again. 
And, you know, there's never, it's never a wrong meeting. There's never, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing. Uh, but, you know, now it's a nice vibe. We have some really amazing people in the UAE. It's fantastic between Dubai and Abu Dhabi. And we got the other Emirates really, you know, charging up. I mean, I've got meetings with Sharjah and I have meetings with Sujeta, uh, both in the next uh, two weeks. Um, cause we're going to take a lot of what we're doing here in Abu Dhabi and we're going to make sure that it's spread around, not just the UAE, but the GCC in general, right? Cause I really, truly, you know, look at this as home right now. So there's a lot we're doing still obviously in us, but here in GCC and then is whatever I can do to plug into, uh, in the crypto Valley, Zug, Switzerland, any of the cantons, you know, uh, of course I'm always thinking about, um, and then, um, you know, and then we're also doing, uh, you know, there's a lot of families I work with from all over the world, Gordon, right. And this includes Russia and China as well. Right. At the end of the day, I look at people as people and the governments that get in our way. I grew up in it. I'm from DC. It's just stupid. Okay. And I don't give a shit anymore. Right. At the end of the day, like, let's be real, you know, like, uh, our Chinese brothers are our Chinese brothers, our Chinese sisters are our Chinese sisters. And that goes for any people in a day. So that's why here is, this is the new Switzerland. Abu Dhabi is the new Switzerland. And you can really, truly conduct business here with anybody from around the world and uh, and do things in a commercial way with the, you know, that's above board with real integrity, with real, with real rule of law. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, you can tell you incredible it, it, stories here. It's, it's Americanism here. It is, man. Yeah. Full on. Yes. I know. I know. Yeah. Um, what, what's your Swiss connection? How did that happen? Or what is that? Same family that brought me here has a chalet in Switzerland and went to boarding school in Switzerland. So that brought me into the Swiss world. And that's how I got super plugged into Switzerland. And then I started working with some of the Swiss families. And so that brought me more to Switzerland. And now a number of those families are our partners and investors at Entrepreneurs Investment Office. And then are coming into the new secret play we're doing in Abu Dhabi. Do you know, I mean, here we are on a live show, but do, do you know Bernd, Bernd Lapp? The name sounds familiar, but I can't place. He's, I just met with him yesterday. I feel like I should connect you guys. He he's, was involved in Crypto Valley sure. and that whole crew, but he, okay. he's a, he is a crypto OG and he's very much into turning solutions into products. That That's his thing. Mm -hmm. And I was going to hook him up with New Native anyway. And yes, I'm saying this on a recorded show, but uh, since he got, he's got the Swiss connection, I'll, I'll, I'll do that right after this. I'll form a group. See, folks, it's all about networking. It's all about connecting. Um, and that, that's the manifestation we were talking about. Perfect. It, it, it's great. Yeah, I know. I throw good stuff into the universe and eventually, no matter what, the good it, stuff going to happen. And sometimes it swings back, which is cool. Well, it's funny when Powell, the uh, you know, founder of New Native, when he was meeting with you, he's like, yeah, he's like, I met with Gordon, blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, okay, it's funny. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm like, I have a feeling, you know, that Gordon and I are going to be talking about this soon. It's small. I, I know everything keeps on. It's like a tesseract. Everything keeps on folding back on itself. Yeah, exactly. Dude. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's funny. So we go. Let, let me. You, but I will throw you a little bit of a curveball. I or I'll, let me tell you what my frustration is, and you tell me if you feel it also, or if I'm seeing things wrong. When I first got into crypto and blockchain in 2014, my, my motivation was twofold. It was like, oh, cool, new area of practice of law, yay! But it was mainly that I thought that blockchain, it could. It's not just that, you know, blockchain needed law. It's that law needed blockchain. In other words, mm -hmm. the, the things that were archaic or outdated or slow or unnecessarily diverse about law, like the fact you have a California corporation and a Nevada corporation and a French corporation could sort of all be ameliorated through the application of blockchain and crypto, and we could speed up the progress of humanity. And I was really hoping that the U.S. would get on the ball and yep. push forward because, you know, we are the pioneer country we are you know individualism all that other good stuff but i I've, I've been very frustrated to the point of giving up and re and relocating at the treatment of blockchain and crypto of the people and the businesses and the ideas in the u.s and i kind of just gave up and just or i don't know if i gave up I, I decided to come here push the uae and this region forward in the hopes that that would kind of put yep. a hot poker into the u.s and the u.s would finally take action am i being too dour or what, what, what's your sense? No, I, I feel the same way. Look, this is why I'm here. I can get more done here, even though, bro, even though I have very senior connections in DC and I can move things around, it's so much energy and effort. Whereas yeah. here I can literally go directly to ADGM and sit in ADGM and have a, 
homey to homey conversation with a regulator with no issues, right? No bullshit. Um, you can't do that in the U.S. Uh, so it's it's really a, it's a damn shame. I used to live across from the SEC. I literally lived on Capitol Hill, right across from the SEC. I literally lived right there uh, on First Street, um, and so in Northeast. And I it's just I don't see any light at the end of the tunnel there, and I don't think the the juice is worth the squeeze whatsoever. Uh, so I think this is the play, really. And then you know the U.S. is going to have to catch up. It can adopt whatever, right? But this is the we're pioneering everything here out of the UAE at the end of the day. You know, that's that's it. I mean, you want to come do crypto and you want to do it in a regulatory framework. You want to have the right sandboxes. You want to be able to plug into ecosystems like BMCC, Crypto Center, that Ahmed has built, which is amazing. There are now over 600 crypto centers, right? I mean, it's just amazing, you know, and to see the reception here. And then to your point, have all that on chain and have that that trust level. And then be able to put AI on top of that with new native and, you know, all of the, all of our partners at open AI and Microsoft and Google and pulling our partners at world bank and kingdom of Saudi Arabia and everything else. And all the stuff we've already, but we're already doing right now. That's exciting. That's cool. You know, that's, that's, that's a new system, right? Then on top of that, on top of that, you put some new technologies that I'll go into in our next uh, episode on top of that, that are like, uh, that are like silicon semiconductors and quantum had a baby, right? That's a new technology that was just invented four years ago that we're commercializing. You put that on and we run our AI on that, which is a thousand times faster and cheaper, <laughs> right? Then we're talking about a whole different ball game. Wait, uh, hold on, hi, because you, you, you... Yeah, yeah, I haven't told you about this one, dude. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Faster Sorry. Than me, which is amazing because I talk pretty fast. The, um, so there, 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 there's been a gap that I... Am, don't believe it's been solved by bridging quantum and AI, both getting yeah, we, saw, we, we, saw, getting we solved it. Yeah, we solved it. Benefit. So yeah, we saw we solved it. Yeah, we solved it. Okay. Yeah. One one of one of one of our family offices has commercialized this new technology. Um, and we're bringing it to market in the form of sensors to kick things off. Uh, but it's a full use application. So sensors, think about when a Tesla is driving at night and you have inclement weather, so it's already hard to see. And the AI makes in in inaccurate or incorrect decisions because it can't get the information from the sensor itself because a certain sensor has limitations based on the law of thermodynamics and physics right now and because of degradation. So as the, as the quality of the signals coming in are degraded, there that that's the gap that exists right now. And that's why the accidents happen. And that's why AI is limited. So this first sensor we're doing and all these different car applications uh, will literally increase the overall visibility and the ability to have sensors come in by a thousand X. So you literally at night can see better and you can have better information coming into the AI than you would have ever had in the old sensors a day when it's as clear as day. Um, I'll, I'll say the obvious though, I don't know if I should. The, that has super scary military applications. Yes, correct. Yeah, a number of this is going to be some of this is going to be commercial, and some of this will go back to my hometown. Correct. Yeah, hundred percent. Got it. Uh, let me quickly change the topic before I get canceled. The, have you looked at analog computing at all? Analog computing? No. Tell me about. You know, I mean, I vaguely. But analog computing, because of you know the, the the issue you're talking about with digital, is you know this sort of the zero to one step and back. And yep. the the inherent lossy nature of it, and so, so, and even if you get even if you get ultimately minute, you're not quite minute enough, and you can't quite work on a spectrum in in the, in the way you can. With I'll, I'll send you a couple of video, videos. There's there's some there's a little bit of a niche analog revolution happening, and as you're talking about sensors, I'm thinking that this might be an interesting aspect. And it, to my mind, human intelligence is a bit analog. And we're, and we're trying to replicate it in a digital way. And totally. And also to my mind, quantum is because of the uncertain nature of it, maybe is a better mimic for analog than digital is in some ways. So just throwing it out there that if you're, look, if you're looking at, you know, gathering data for a AI that can really understand non-digital input, analog computing might be an interesting thing to look at. I'll, I'll send you a video. Okay. Yeah, no, that's super interesting. I, I totally get the, uh, the thinking. Yeah, please. No, that's really cool. Okay. Uh, wow, there's a lot. There's never a lot thought, never, never thought we'd be going back to analog, dude. 
No, 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 no. you know, I, I saw the title. Love it. I'm really trying to fool, and then I watched it, and I'm not articulating it fully, but I, I watched the video, and I was like, huh, okay, there, there is a, an interesting niche case here, and I understand their argument. Cool. So, and you know, with when you start, when you start having the artificial intelligence that can pattern spot, and it can maybe make use of information in ways that we can't, or regular digital computers can't. So, sure. Yep. Just a thought. Okay. So, I think episode one, we're going to wind it down because we need to have episode two soon. Um, awesome, man. I mean, I'll kind of leave it to you to leave the audience with a thought on what you're working on or your vision or what, 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 what your favorite restaurant in Abu Dhabi, just it, it's yours. Okay, so we'll start out with favorite restaurant is the restaurant which I actually grew up in D.C., Milano, owned by Franco. Thanks, Franco, okay. for bringing that over here. Appreciate that. All right, and the blessings go to uh, Ambassador Oteba and, and everyone in Abu Dhabi for bringing Franco over here. Uh, and then I think, look, the thing I want to leave everyone with is that I just want everyone to have access, or the <laughs> bug flying, this, uh, I want everyone to have access on chain to any different type of financial product and understand what they're investing in in order to generate those returns, we're going to lead that by all of our investments to make sure that our liquid piece, because it's the easiest piece to understand when everyone's getting a cash on cash return, along with the illiquid piece, which would be private equity, venture capital, direct investments, you know, so on and so on. Uh, that those pieces are available, um, in you know, as this uh, industry grows and blossoms, uh, that 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 this available to people, so that people can start to compound their money, and that we're going to then. Take one of our other uh, portfolio companies, uh, which is an indexation with technology. It's a Swiss company. So we have technology around indexation and we're creating indexation, right? We're commercializing that indexation, creating financial products and structured products around the underlying so that people can go and they don't have to think about it. And they're investing with professionals that have put this together and we know what the hell we're doing. We, we calculated the risk. We have our own money at work as well. Right. It all needs to align and make sense. And that's what I want to leave everyone with. And that's what I want. And that's what we're building. And that's what we're going to offer to everyone so that people don't have to rely on, you know, stupid bank deposits, time lock deposits or all this other bullshit. You know, as you're talking, I, I got this weird vision of like a universal basic income future where if we are going to if we're all going to robotics and AI, if you have people with sovereignty over their money and they're they're invested on chain and able to live off live off the interest. It'd be, it'd be uh, maybe that's a better world than the one we're yeah, heading. For. Exactly. Solution, yeah, and, and then yeah, and and we're teaching people a bit more. And I'd say everyone needs to be a bit. Everyone needs to be a bit more responsible. Yes. Okay? I'm saying this where I was when I was younger. I was a very responsible human being. Right. That's why I'm so crazy. Uh, but at the end of the day, you have to be responsible. And responsibility comes over first and foremost your money and your first and foremost your sovereignty, and then your sovereignty will derive down that responsibility to your money. And everything else and your assets right across the board and when you get into crypto you learn that because you lose those freaking 12 or 24 words man and you know whatever you had in that wallet is gone and ain't no ain't you there's no crying there's no calling there ain't nobody <clears throat> which are why multi-sigs and other you know you know redundancies in place are important you learn that stuff more of like an institutional or family office type setup or like you know i've got backup you know scenario um but don't be scared of crypto i mean this is the future at the end of the day and it gives you power Right. But there's yes. responsibility with that. So at the end of the day, you know, look, if you want to get into crypto, I'll be very frank about it. You can't be a little bitch. You know what? I'm going to leave on that note. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Wilson, don't be a little bitch. Brother, I love it. I'm, I'm All right. Amazing, right, I'm Gordon. Recording, but you will come back on the show. Okay. Yes. Have your commitment. Yeah, bro. 100%. 100%. Yeah, of course. Right. I appreciate you. Okay. Hold on here.